Uh, howdy y'all, welcome to History by Phillips, I'm the teacher Mr. Phillips. Uh, today is going to be a quick review of the spirit of independence and a class update. Uh, without further ado, let's get into the review of the spirit of independence. So this week we talked about how the colonists uh, started getting uh, angry, started getting resentment toward the English government, and particularly uh, King George and his treatment of the colonies. Uh, the first video that we uh, looked into, or we first video that we discussed was uh, the French and Indian War. If you remember, uh, back in when we talked about colonial America. Sorry about the update. Miss Grimes, can you come to the office, please? So remember, back in colonial America, uh, you had Spain pretty much settling the South America, pretty much Florida, and the West Coast of the United States. Uh, you have France, pretty much here in the Orange, uh, settling around the Great Lakes area and along the Mississippi River. Then you have the English colonies, pretty much along the east coast of the United States, uh, pretty much between the Appalachian Mountains and the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, two countries that we're going to focus at are going to be France and England at this time period, uh, something that we call the French and Indian War. Uh, they'd be fighting over an area called the Ohio River Valley. Uh, it is rich in farmland, more importantly, uh, fur, uh, in particular, beaver fur. Uh, it's a hot commodity, like I said in the video, it's like the Gucci, the Louis Vuitton, the, I don't know, whatever the kids wear these days, the Supremes. It was the name brand stuff, everybody wanted it, uh, and you can find it here in the Ohio River Valley. Indians typically sided with the French. Uh, but varies from tribe to tribe. Uh, some side with the English to get rid of the French. Some side with the French to get rid of the English. They all had their own motives and reasons why they decided with the English and French. For the most part, uh, tribes typically favored the French because they wasn't there to set up homes. They typically come there in the summer for a couple of weeks, try to catch as many beavers as they can, then they'd leave, come back. Uh, unlike the English who come there and they'd start farms, they would start uh, churches, towns, uh, you name it, changing the landscape. The Indians didn't like that. Uh, there were some exceptions, uh, but for the most part, the Indians sided with the French, that's why we call it the French and Indian War, uh, that we, they fought over this area right here, west of the Appalachians, the Ohio River Valley. Uh, England and the colonies would end up winning, uh, and a lot of sanctions got placed after the war. France would lose all of this territory in Orange pretty much to England, part of the Treaty of Paris, uh, but also to help keep peace with the Indians and to help get out of the debt uh, that the wars caused, they pa England passed something called the Proclamation of 1763. Keep note of that. Uh, Proclamation 1763 said pretty much all these English colonists are not allowed to settle west of the Appalachians. Uh, I, in theory, that seems like it would be uh, a good idea. You want to keep peace with the Indians. You also want to uh, keep colonists safe. But the problem with this is, as some of these backwood uh, settlements, the West, as it was known as at the time, especially around in the Tennessee and North Carolina mountains, Pennsylvania, and so forth, uh, you already have these backwood communities. You have these churches, these towns, farms, all that started. They're not going to uproot their life and move back just because uh, King George said so. Their life's already started. They're not going to start over again. Uh, it's hard enough to start over once in life, but start over twice, don't think so. So the colonists are like, eh. And also, King George passed the Quebec Act. The Quebec Act said pretty much all this land that the colonists were fighting over, uh, and they can't settle because of the Proclamation 1763, the Quebec Act pretty much said King George will appoint his governors, and his governors will help colonize the area, and pretty much their boys will help colonize the area. So these people have fought the Indians and French and told they can't live there and King George is going to give all that land to their buddies that's the state in England all the time. So colonists are getting really mad at it. The next uh, video that we talked about was the uh, no taxation without representation and uh, uniting the colonies. Uh, no taxation without representation is co it's a common trope. We talked about this in the U.S. history this time period. Uh, what that means is, uh, do not tax these citizens unless they can participate in government. By participate means they can uh, go to the legislature, uh, have discussions, have debates, just participate in government in general. 
Uh, you can't take a constituent's money and not let them participate in the government. That's what the colonists were mad about. Uh, in reality, the colonists had the lowest taxes of anybody in the British Empire at the time. Uh, the reason why they was getting taxed is because England needed a way to uh, pay off the war debt from the French and Indian War. So they decided to raise uh, taxes on the colonies. Uh, the colonies kind of got upset because they couldn't participate in the government. So there's more tension brewing between the colonies and England. Uh, more colonies changing. Uh, yeah, this, and United Colonies, this week you uh, look at a piece by Thomas Paine. Thomas Paine uh, was part of the immediate correspondence. Uh, remember those guys like Sons of Liberty, they pretty much keeping tabs on what the British were doing, sending secret messages, running the post offices, stuff like that. But anyway, Thomas Paine, he wrote a pamphlet, a 47 page pamphlet, I know it's kind of weird thing of the pamphlet being that long, but it's a 47 page pamphlet called Common Sense. And in the common sense, he'd argue, why should we listen to England? We're bigger in England. We have more people. Uh, we can do. We we can tax ourselves. We can govern ourselves. What do we need King George in Parliament in Parliament in England for? We can be our own country. A lot of people thought it made sense. It made common sense. So since it got the common sense, uh, very influential literature, especially in the 1700s, about uh, the colonies wanting to strive for independence. Uh, also, you have King George. Uh, the colonists would uh, rebel against all these taxes one way or another, either by smuggling, lying, uh, either beating up like the tax collectors and the local judges, stuff like that. Uh, resent it. Uh, eventually, this would bring up to a boiling point in Boston. Remember, old Boston is that one area of the country that does not like King George. Uh, roughly, the further north you go to colonies, the less likely you'll find people that like England. The further south you go, more likely you'll find people that like King George. Uh, remember the difference between patriots and loyalists. Some people want to separate, some people don't. They have various reasons and motivations. Uh, kind of like the Civil War. Some people's family fought for the North, some people fought for the South. Same thing for here. Some people want to fight for independent, uh, independent colonies. Some people want to remain loyal to Britain. Same kind of situation. Uh, but this will all blow over at the Boston Massacre. Now this is where propaganda starts taking form in America. You had two perspectives. You had one that the Americans uh, circulated throughout their newspapers and stuff, which was an organized execution by the British soldiers. Then you had what the British perspective had was uh, British soldiers just doing, just on duty, uh, being sworn by a mob, getting thrown, uh, rocks thrown at them, sticks thrown at them, stuff like that. Uh, either way, this is a situation where you have a government uh, killing its own citizens. No matter how you paint it, that's still bad. So this is another reason why the colonists are like, Oh, we don't need England no more. Why can't we be our own? Uh, just more fuel to the fire. Uh, next one was a call to arms. So all this was going on, uh, everybody realized things are getting bad with England. Keep in mind, England has the best army in the world at the time, uh, best navy at the time, uh, most experienced, they've been fighting wars for breakfast for like centuries. These guys know how to play war. Uh, colonies on their other hand, they don't even have an army. They have to rely on militias. Remember, militias are pretty much a soldier hasn't been the basic training yet. They're ready and willing, just haven't had the training. Uh, these people range from all sorts of walks of life. You had the decent militiamen from like the veterans from the French and Indian War, all the way to like 12, 13 year old boys in the militias. Uh, some nobles, the men of men, uh, the Green Mountain Boys, the Over Mountain Men, those are from around this area. Uh, those are some noble militias. Anyway, all these militias are training, uh, getting rifles, getting, uh, well, muskets, getting ammunition, powder, cannons, training, uniforms, you name it. They're trying to get everything in a hurry because they realize something bad is about to happen with Britain, and of course it does. Uh, Britain catches word that these uh, rebels are stockpiling weapons in a town called Concord. Uh, they're marching to Concord to go get these weapons. Uh, they're stopped by about 70 minute men in the town called Lexington. Uh, nobody knows who shot first, but the shot heard around the world. Uh, the war's kicked off. 
those guys would retreat back to Concord. They uh, and they make a defense there on something called the North Bridge. There they whipped them. These back ragtag uh, militiamen. They whipped them. Uh, inflicted more casualties. Didn't that sustain as nearly as many on paper? They did more damage. Uh, they get into another tussle at uh, Bunker's Hill. We discussed Bunker's Hill, but Bunker's Hill was actually fought on Breed's Hill. And then they had to retreat back to Bunker's Hill, then back toward Boston. Uh, but it, yet, yet again, you had these untrained militiamen taking on the best army in the world. They got whipped. King George, he's been whipped twice. He's embarrassed on a global scale by Spain, France, all the other European countries. Uh, England's supposed to be the end all be all the time. They got the most colonies, biggest empire, so on and so forth. So King George is embarrassed, he's had enough. He's sending his whole pretty much army to the colonies. Well not the whole army, but he sent a good portion of it. Along with thirty thousand Hessians. If you don't remember what Hessians are, Hessians are pretty much uh German soldiers, they're mercenaries, it's pretty much a soldier you can buy when you want. He bought thirty thousand of them. Uh he's serious about uh, curbing the rebellion in the colonies. Uh so it's about to get up the colonists, uh, they have early successes in the war, but they're about to soon realize the full might of King George in England. Uh, it won't be until France helps us. If it weren't for France, we'd still probably be considered British today. Uh, but with France's help, we'd end up being independent, but we'll talk about that next week. Uh, last we'll talk about declaring independence. So. Finally, it got to a breaking point. They decided to have a committee in June 1776. Sorry, got too close to the camera. In June 1776, so Patrick Henry Lee proposed a, revolu uh, a resolution saying, hey, all Scottish colonies should unite and be your own country. Uh, it took them about a month. In that month, they debated about it, what they should do, and they also wrote the Declaration of Independence. They came back a month later. Everybody voted on it on July 2nd. They rewrote this to make it fancy, and on July 4th was when the Declaration of Independence was finally published to the public uh, in 1776, the reason why we blow stuff up in the summer. Woo! Go fireworks. Uh, basically, the Declaration of Independence, it states, has four parts, has the preamble, a uh, list of rights, the grievances, and who signed this. Uh, the grievances is all the stuff that you'll find in the Bill of Rights, which we'll be talking about here soon, uh, like quartering troops, these, uh, all these taxes, uh, search and seizures, trial by jury, all the violations, like all the stuff you can find in the Bill of Rights that King George is violating, you'll find in the list of grievances. You'll also find the Declaration of Natural Rights. That is a John Locke philosophy, an English philosopher idea. You're pretty much born with rights. You're God-given rights, natural rights. Uh, some of these is to worship whoever or whatever you want. Uh, freedom of the, uh, freedom of speech, uh, right to getting groups together, petition to go, just stuff like that. A lot of things you can find in the Bill of Rights. Uh, you have it. But that was the spirit of independence this, uh, this week. Next week we'll be talking about the American Revolution and, <coughs> and the conclusion of it. Hence, hence, America becomes its own nation. Hence, it's American history, not British history. Uh, but as a class update, this week, We've kind of got to some sense of norm normalcy. Uh, online students, you should be able to get into Google Classroom and Edmental. Uh, from what I understand, it's pretty much your Edmental and your Study Island passwords are the same. Uh, if it asks you for your school I or your account ID, put in CCS, hopefully this is working good on the camera, SD. Uh, dash TN. That is CCSD dash TN. Cop County School District dash Tennessee. Uh, put that in. Your username and password should be the same as this. You should be done doing paper packets for me if you are an online student. Now, my print students will be the same as usual. Uh, the work will be changed up just a tad bit. Also, to mention, I'll continue to upload my lectures like this. But in the afternoons, I'll be going live. Uh, what that will consist of, I don't know yet, so I'll have to hash it out. I don't know if that's going to be in the form of a Google Hangout, a Zoom meeting, uh, or whatever kind of program. I can figure out that simple for everybody. Uh, but we'll have a live study block. So basically there, my goal is uh, ideally students will watch the videos throughout the week and they can log in in the afternoon, come to this study block. 
Uh, we can discuss questions they, that they might have, uh, discuss their homework, things of that sort. Uh, that's all I can think of right now. Hopefully everybody's staying dry. It's going to be a rainy day today. Uh, got, can we got a football game tonight against Dave Crockett. Uh, go to Roosters. Woo. Uh, Cosby, I'm sure they got one too. Uh, till then, everybody be safe. Have a great weekend. Uh, we're getting there. Next week, uh, expecting some normalcy. Online students, I'm expecting you to be online by now. Be taking grades. Uh, until then, until next week, everybody be safe. Take care. This has been History by Phillips. And I have been your teacher, Mr. Phillips. I'm getting better at this. No worries. I'm being your teacher, Mr. Phillips. Uh, have a great weekend. Until then, everybody take care. Peace.